Welcome to Abona's vlog. <laughs> After the Battle of Giza, Romansa left the Council of Corpse Morn and traveled eastward over the sands of Jordan, Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan. Now that most of the human technology had fallen to disrepair, modern transports were difficult to come by. She walked the entire way. As she made her way, visions began streaming in from seers in India and China of humans that were extremely resistant to attack. It took Romansa two months to walk day and night from Cairo to New Delhi. Romansa walked down the muddy southern slope of the Delhi Ridge towards Rashtrapati Bhavan, the president's house. <laughs> As she arrived at the entrenched siege of New Delhi, uh, High Commander Hafu welcomed her with a feast of the brains of human commanders, considered a delicacy. <laughs> I suppose so. If you eat brains, then human commanders would be the delicacy. After they had eaten many brains, they walked out of the east facade of Rashtrapati Bhavan into the rain and looked down the Rajpath. Rajpath or Rajpat? There's a TH there. Rajpath. <laughs> Towards the enemy. They touched and, in, and exchanged memories, communing, communicating the extent of the human resistance. Romansa had already noticed that she could not feel the New Delhi mines from afar. The humans' contact of the Caesar, the humans' contact of the seers, had triggered their evolution and ability to defend against projected visions. High Commander Hafu had created a large ring of defiled seers among the buildings of New Delhi to combat the human seers' ability to control the weak-minded defiled. Previously, without this protection, their units had become confused, and many, became <coughs> and many began attacking their fellow defiled. At the other end of the Rajpath uh, stood the National Stadium, the center of human resistance. Romansa released Hafu's memory transfer and projected that all units should hold back. Romansa walked down New Delhi's Grand Rajpath and with no resistance until Vijay Chok Vijay Chok? I can't pronounce the words in my own story. Oh man, it's been too long. I think I knew how to pronounce it when I wrote it because I looked it up, right? Uh, when suddenly... Oh, well that's in the middle of a sentence. Right. Romansa walked down New Delhi's Grand Rajpath with no resistance until Vijay Chok when suddenly mortars and gunfire fired down the street towards her instantly before Queen Romansa knew what was happening her psychic energy erupted from in the air around her deflecting explosions and shielding her body from harm her consciousness transcended her body and watched from above <clears throat> eyewitnesses <clears throat> mentioned that Romansa the psionic was hovering above the ground with her body supported from above as though she hung from her chest. Her arms, legs, and head flopped to the sides and back. The air crackled with electricity. A metallic flavor could be tasted in the mouth. Pebbles, mud, and rain began to float in the air. Seers noticed the sudden lack of projected vision from Romansa, which had been constant since she had taught them. The explosions and gunfire had ended, and the downpour of rain returned to normal, but Romansa continued to hover. She regained control of her arms and head, and continued once again towards the India Gate at the end, at the end of the Rajpath, except that she hovered through the air. On the India Gate, which, re which resembled the Arc de Triomphe, I probably mispronounced that too. Stood resistance leader Seraphin. As Romansa the Sionic approached the gate, nature caster Seraphin raised her hands to the rainy sky and uttered unintelligible words. From the cloud filled sky came a myriad of swift lightning bolts on top of Romansa's head, channeling through her body continuously, continuously and rendering her incapacitated. Seraphin the nature caller crashed her hands upon the monument where she hovered. 
nature bound seraphin. Oh, no. Seraphin, the nature caller, crashed her hands upon the monument and tree roots grew from the ground beneath Romanta, twisting into the air and tangling her where she hovered. Nature bound Seraphin picked up her rifle and aimed it at the forehead of Romanza, who twisted and writhed with electricity, yet barely moved from under the hold of the tree roots. The swift bullet shot into Romanza's forehead. <gasps> Have you read Beowulf, by the way? Oh my. Seraphin descended the ladder. As the lightning subsided and the tree roots released Romanza, letting her fall to the ground face first. Face first. Seraphin picked up Romanza's head between her hands and stared at her blood-soaked life, her blood-soaked face, lifeless and neutral. But she wasn't dead, and she had built up her psionic energy even before Seraphin took hold of her. Blood and juices splattered against Seraphin's face as the bullet shot out of Romanza's forehead and slammed into Seraphin's for, uh, head, killing her. Romanza the Peerless stood up as Romanza's head fell back. <gasps> oh, she wasn't dead after all. Uh. Okay, that piece was bigger than I thought it was. Hmm. What do you think? Right, we got the superpowers, magical energies, superpowers, fairy tale, creation myth, zombies from the other side, and super zombie. Chocolate, you know? It just gets all over the place. Okay. Suddenly, as the New Delhi humans were not protected by nature color seraphin's psionic defense, Romansa, Queen of Death, called forth the siege again and left New Delhi to High Commander Hafu. Over the next 50 years, she sought out and killed the remaining fearful humans in their far-flung corners. The defiled society rested in peace under her reign. Her, she soothed her dis, their discomforts and showed them the way to solace. It was truly the golden age of evolution, a time beyond strife. Over the years, Romanza the visionary grew in age. Her half-birth left in her traces of her humanity, that of final death. But in, her, but in her 50th year of her reign, reports came to Queen Romansa of the final deaths of multiple defiled in Cairo. The Queen of Death held a council of the corpse mart and requested that eleven accompany her to investigate the, the disturbance, of which I was one. As we set out, we could see that Cairo was on fire. A great plume of smoke rose in the sky, and dark clouds enveloped the city. Romansa, the half-born, looked at the distance in dismay as a new light, bright as the sun, shone from within the dark clouds, illuminating them in all, direct in all directions. We felt the suffering of millions of defiled crying out and becoming silent. Oh, I just had to make a Star Wars reference. <laughs> okay, we as we d <clears throat> arrived in Cairo, black rain fell on our heads, and firestorms raged amongst the decaying buildings. The Queen of Death remained resolute, and we continued to pierce deeper into the city. The lifeless bodies of defile lined 
the streets and rubble piles. Finally, we came upon a clearing in the heart of the city, a sort of makeshift stadium for the battle to come. Two humans stood at the center, a male and a female. <clears throat> Romanza turned towards her eleven <clears throat> corpse, <clears throat> corpse mourn leaders and spoke. I will go into battle, and you will witness the death of this last remnant of humanity, or I will die this black day. And so it came to pass that the Queen of Death, who had bathed in the blood of a million humans, walked through fire into that hellish stadium, covered of black rain, as we corpse mourn looked on. The humans turned towards Ramansa and inquired, Alone defiled, why would you wish for final death? Ramansa replied, What are your names? I will honor you as the last humans to live. Ashura responded, the ragged male, his flesh full of glass and covered of lacerations. Elana responded the elderly female, her skin a deathly yellow and her body lacking hair. I am queen of the defiled, Romansa. I created this world and you will not ruin it. The thermomancers brought their hands together and around a ball of light between them as they watched Romansa. Who, became, who began to fly across the ground towards them. They pulled their hands away and batted the ball of radiating light at Romansa. They exploded it as it, they, which exploded as it passed her, lighting Romansa on fire. She continued to fly towards the duo faster and faster until Suncaller Alana raised her hands to the sky, calling forth the beams of the sun, and Earthcaller Ashura spread his legs wide and slammed the ground with his fists. A stream of molten lava burst out of the ground as solar beams fell from the sky and tore Romansa between them and a great flurry of light. When the black rain began to fall again after the sunbeams retreated, Romansa hovered in the air with only her right arm and her left leg. The others had disintegrated in the blast. For the first time in many seasons, her mind was chaotic and racked with pain. Her body fell to the ground, and she held herself up with her right arm. These two humans were destined to kill the visionary one. She wallowed in pain, seeing death before her. I looked to the other corpse morn. Our queen requires our help. After all these years, she is in the brink of death. We are not the enlightened if we do not have the courage to face the humans. I ran down the rubble slope, but my fellow corpse morn did not follow. They hid behind buildings and rubble piles. The two thermomancers pressed their hands together and a corona of blue fire encircled the stadium of rubble. I reached her and, we, and she placed her arm around my neck. I placed my left arm around her torso. The sizzling blue fire imploded upon us as I raised my psionic shield preventing damage to our bodies. Together we jumped at the two humans and used psionic energy to throw them to the buildings at either side of the stadium at the speed of sound. A rippling boom echoed across this, the stadium bowl. Psionic Romansa became emboldened with my support and let go of me to fly at Earth Color Ashura as I jumped at Sun Color Elana. Romansa, mother of death, slammed her hand through Ashura's chest and ripped his heart out. I tore Elana's head from her body and punched a hole in her stomach. The dual thermal monsters would terrorize the putrid defiled no more. As I looked upon the lifeless body of Sun Color Alana, the entirety of Romansa's existence flashed into my memory along with visions for the future. Romansa the visionary's mind fell silent and I looked around, seeing her at the opposite end of the stadium. When I approached Romansa by nature color Ashura's body, I saw that he had smashed her skull against the building he was embedded in before he died. And so it came to pass that Romansa had attained final death. I returned and slaughtered the remaining ten corpse morn. The psionic thermomancers were the last of the humans. I ruled of the remaining corpse morn as Romansa envisioned, by being the projection of by being the, pro the projection of solace to all defiled. Romansa became the symbol of transformation to all the defiled. She left her mark so that we may, we may continue what she began, the eternal cessation of suffering. Uh-oh. That's the story.
us little bits at the bottom. Well, tell me what you thought. I wrote it myself, so I understand if you don't like it. I thought it was pretty cool when I wrote it. The idea of um, eternal life and what would a next evolution be like? Zombies. I'm not really into zombies, so I took it from the other end where the zombies are victorious and we're on the zombie side. And uh, the main zombie has superpowers anyway, right? Um, Romanza kind of takes after um, Sarah Kerrigan from uh, StarCraft, right? She's the like uh, Zerg Queen, right? And she mind controls all the Zerg. So it's kind of similar. The uh, Defiled have um, well, they're not mind controlled, but they kind of they have like a single mind thing going on where they all know what each other are experiencing. They don't think, they don't have thoughts where they're like, oh, I want to do this or something. They just do things, but they just share, you know, a link. Kind of um, my version of like a, a spirituality or something where they're all one, they're all combining together. Kind of reminds me of uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion at the moment, now that I'm talking about it. Where um, at the end you have the LCL pool that uh, combines all humans together into one consciousness, right? And so this is my version of what would uh, to, like a zombie heaven be like? It would be like you're all together and somehow uh, Romanza since she's connected to humans, can find enlightenment and kind of be the enlightenment for everyone else. So kind of heaven there for the zombies, because I assume zombies are just like, uh, they're, they just have desires, right? Um, uns insatiable desire. And that would be hell. So how do you help a zombie out? Well, you make them so that they feel much better. Something like that. So, I put some thought into it. And what would the culture be like? Well, they, wouldn't, they don't have to eat or anything. They don't actually have to do stuff. So, it just becomes like a culture of devotion. Um, right? It's all they do is would just, you know... I don't know what you'd call it. Pray or something. Meditate. Hang out. <laughs> you know. in Cairo or something. I've thought about uh, writing more of this story. Um, of um, expanding it and kind of making a jump off point for a universe um, where they actually are humans, they're in the Himalayas or something, right? And the zombies didn't quite get to everyone. and. That's where these two came from, Ashura and Alana, near the end, Inia, right? They came out and they're just like, we're gonna do this, right? We're gonna go kill the leader or something like that. Um, and then, so maybe they're humans and maybe they grow a civilization up in the Himalayas or wherever and um, maybe crazy stuff starts happening, magic and stuff like that. How that about expanding it? I thought that would be cool. But right now I'm working on my uh, my card game. Um, the card game I told you about before, I'm working on it again. I've made some changes to the rules and all that. So it's going pretty well. Summer break. I have another month. I think that's good. Told you my story. Tell me what you think. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you! Subscribe to get more videos, comment below to tell me what you'd like to see, and check out Patreon if you'd like to support me. Bye!